Hello and welcome to Win Our Life with Hannah Keegan and George Barrage. In today's show you will get to see our exclusive video features which will be watched by a senior feature writer for the Southern Daily Echo, our guest Sally Churchwood. Welcome Sally. Hello, thank you for having me. Very nice to have you with us. So tell us a little bit about yourself, what inspired you to want to become a journalist? Well I've always been keen on writing and I think it's always been something I've been you know, relatively good at and um, also I wanted to make a difference in the world. I'm, I'm very interested in um, women's issues, I'm a feminist <laughs> and, um, and it, I'm concerned about the underrepresentation of women in the media and it's, I'm obviously one more woman also I can kind of choose what I write about a bit. Fantastic. And, yeah. and have you always been a writer or have you produced video content as well? Yeah I went in as a writer but where the um, newspapers have moved more and more towards the internet um, we all now shoot and edit our own videos on new subjects as well. Okay. Of course, now we know that you specialise mostly in features and human interest stories, but have you ever tried your hand at something like food reviews? Yeah, I love to do restaurant reviews, holiday reviews especially. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, well our food correspondents Zoe Anderson and Becky Davis uh, took a day out of their lives to show us that you can cook posh nosh on a tight budget. Life can be really difficult, especially with daily items being so expensive, but food is a must have and we're here today to show you that not everyone needs to live out of tins and paper packets to save money. And it's definitely a rare treat when we can go to a restaurant without taking a voucher or a discount card, but even when we have them, it's still more expensive. So Becky and I are here to show you guys that you can still have that luxurious meal at home with your friends, but still sticking to that small budget. So we've set ourselves a challenge. We want to cook a three course meal for four people spending no more than 12 pounds. Let's put it to the test. For starter, we're cooking a creamy tomato soup served with cheesy garlic dippers. You will need two cans of cherry tomatoes. Next, make 250 ml of vegetable stock and pour that into the pan. Add two balls of mascarpone, not ice cream, and stir until the mix looks tasty. For the cheesy garlic dippers, slice some mozzarella, spread a touch of garlic puree onto the chia batter, if Zoe can do this anyone can, then stuff the chia batter with the mozzarella cheese. Place them into the oven for a few minutes until the cheese has melted nicely. And dig in! Next up on the menu is our Cumberland sausage pasta. To serve four, slice up eight sausages. This can be quite a messy job. This is where it gets emotional for Becky. Simmer with the sausages until soft. Stir in two cans of chopped tomatoes for some extra flavour. Paprika really adds a bit of spice. Cook your pasta and then enjoy. And finally, for our dessert, we are serving a raspberry and white chocolate mousse. To begin, break up two bars of white chocolate and put onto the hob. Separate six eggs, and if you can, try and do this a little bit better than Zoe. Thanks, Becky. Pour the egg yolks onto the melted chocolate. Whisk the leftover egg whites into the egg and chocolate mixture. Add crushed raspberries or a fruit of your choice into the mixture, and then pour into glasses. So there we have it, a three course meal for four people at just £12. looks delicious. What do you reckon, George? Well, it certainly wet my appetite. Now, we have Becky and Zoe with us here in the studio now. So, can you tell us what gave you the idea for this feature? 
Well, people are always going to restaurants, particularly young people. So we wanted to show them that as much as it is a nice place to hang out, the food comes quickly, it's easy, they can enjoy cooking from home. It can be just as quick, just as easy, and save you a lot of money. And it can be fun cooking with your friends. Definitely. And Sally, what did you make of that? Great idea. And I'm sure you know, it would be good for students to relate to. And you know, to be honest, people with money as well or with earnings, because you know, £12 for a meal is brilliant. Um, I thought really nice script all the way through. Uh, um, I think because you were doing the script, it would have been nice to maybe have the recipe on the screen as well so that you can kind of concentrate on both. But I like the, the way you had your personalities stamped on it. It wasn't just a generic recipe, so that was really nice. Thank you. Now moving on to something a little bit different. George, this might be more up your street. We are going over to our games correspondent, Ewan Kennerall, to investigate the increasing world of girl gamers. Gaming is generally thought of as a solely male activity, but apparently more and more girls have started playing games. I asked some female gamers how they got into gaming and what their favourite games are. When I was younger, I used to play them because of my brother, he used to be a big gamer. Um, but as I've got older, um, it's just sort of grown out of the habit of it. I do still play um, stuff like exercise things like dance and murder and um, the odd game of Mario Kart, but um, I don't really, not really a gamer myself. Like the Wii Zumba and stuff, like you get more involved, or the dance games, you can play along yourself and you're not just sitting there with like a controller because that just really doesn't interest me at all. <laughs> like I've got to be active if I want to play a game. I started playing things like Sonic and we had Game Boys. I remember playing po Pokemon Red actually, it was probably the first game I ever played, but then as my brother got older he got an Xbox 360 um, and started to play more things like uh, Tekken and Soul Calibur. I love Soul Calibur. Um, played that a lot with him and beat him a lot, which made him really cry once, which is quite funny. My friend taught me how to play COD a little bit. I got on with Black Ops just about, but I wasn't good enough to go online. I was too bad. <laughs> <laughs> One problem is that games don't cater for female audiences, so there are very few relatable protagonists. No, it's never bothered me that like the main characters aren't um, women. But the only thing I don't like is in things like Soul Calibur, where the women's clothes literally just fall off and they've always got massive boobs. That's a bit much. Some games tend to enforce gender stereotypes. For example, Cooking Mama. Cooking with Mama is, um, it seems very much stereotypical to females in the sense that you're cooking with mum. And so it's not really re like reflecting on society because they're putting stereotypes with mums in the kitchen. I think the idea of kind of basically doing cooking games and like the typical, what's what the stereotypical idea of what girls should be doing when they're little, like little girls having a kitchen, like a toy kitchen in their room, because like instead, let's just put it on a game, um, I think that's a bit stupid. Many male games tend to involve violence and action. Do women like these games, or would they rather stay with safer alternatives involving unicorns and flowers? Games like Gears of War and stuff, they, I know a lot of girls do play them, but um, in my mind it's very much a boy thing, the shooting and the um, attacking soldiers and stuff. That is a guy thing and I, I don't know, maybe I would get a thrill out of it. I've never really played it to be fair, so maybe I would get a thrill out of playing the game like that. You and Kenneral for Winchester News Online. I could relate to it a little bit more. Ewan, what made you look into this? Well, um, games have been an interest of mine for a very long time. and. Um, I, was, I found something saying that there were a lot more girls playing games these days and I decided to look into it a, bit, a little more. Okay. Fantastic. And Sally, you think this is something you could get into? Mm, in, my, in my youth I liked a bit of Frogger and Munch Man, but I very much <laughs> doubt you know what they are. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it was a really interesting topic. Um, I think maybe if you can't find the people to interview, mm. then maybe shelve it temporarily until you can, you know, because it's unfortunate have two girl gamers who aren't really gamers. Mm, it was unlucky. I, 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 did, um, I did have another person I interviewed but technical issues prevailed and I couldn't really use the footage in the yeah. end, which was uh, quite annoying. Also, I mean, you're talking about stereotypes and I, you might get a smackdown from a girl gamer for <laughs> yeah. the unicorns and flowers <laughs> comment. Like, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's a good topic. Just, you know, be, be, be strict on yourself. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you for that, Ewan. 
Now, moving on to something different, our music correspondent, David Champion, attended the Ventnor Fringe Festival in the Isle of Wight, and here's what he brought back for us. And that was only a sneak peek. You can watch David's full festival highlights on our website at www.winall.co.uk. And David is here with us now. So tell us more about your festival experience. Um, yeah, it's a little, it's a little uh, sort of boutique festival in the Isle of Wight. It's called the Ventnor Fringe Festival. Um, it was set up by a couple of friends of mine. It's set up and run exclusively by people under the age of 25. So it's sort of quite a feat. They've managed to pull it all together off their own back. Um, it's a guy called Jack Whitewood, it's all his idea, he's a bit of a, bit of a visionary to be honest. Um, uh, it's the second year it's run, uh, first year we had uh, Johnny Flynn came down and uh, an amazing filmmaker called Vincent Moon, which I think sort of inspired everyone in the Isle of Wight to pick up a camera to be honest. Um, this is the second year as I said, um, and we had Marquis Tolliver, who's probably going to be a semi-household name in the next couple of years, he's an amazing violinist and vocalist, and we had um, Disraeli and the Small Gods. And this is all as uh, all with a uh, theatre as well. It's a real fringe festival, which means um, anyone can apply to perform. We just provide the infrastructure and the the places. We don't really make any money out of it. Each person makes money out of their own shows. So it's sort of self-sufficient shows, and we just provide a sort of network. Brilliant. Wow, it looked fantastic. And Sally, what do you think? Have you got any advice you can give Dave on his feature there? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing itself sounds fantastic. Um, and th yeah, this is just part of a shorter film, isn't it? So this is obviously your flavour to get people into watching it. Um, I think you really nice camera work. I love the, I love the different, the, the kind of different colours that you've used and really nice shots and things. I'd um, maybe just get, get through them all a little bit quicker and if you want to run a, run a longer piece, maybe change the music. Yep. You know, if you want to go slow and then fast or something just to help keep people staying with it because it would be a shame for people not to see it all the way through. And the drop off rate can be quite quick with films. It can be about 30 seconds. So. You really want to get, you know, be getting, getting a good lot of stuff in in that 30 seconds so people see enough of it. That's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Sally. You're it's welcome. been brilliant to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that's all for this week on Win Our Life. And for more features, as well as award-winning news and sport, log on to our website at www.winall.co.uk. Goodbye. Goodbye.